We're so excited to announce that an amazing donor has offered to match your gifts in any amount, up to a total of $100,000 during December. If you love this podcast and our other content, will you consider making a generous gift to the Bible Literacy Foundation before the end of 2023? Give today at BibleLit.org and make your dollar go double the distance. 2024 is going to be big, and we can't wait to show you the Prism Bible app, releasing in beta with the new year. Your giving is what makes all this possible. So give your tax-deductible gift today at BibleLit.org, and along with doubling your gift, all donations over $100 get free access to the Prism Bible app for life. Thanks for giving to the Bible Literacy Foundation. The end of the story comes with judgment followed by unimaginable blessing that the world has never known. On The Bible Brief. Thank you for listening to The Bible Brief Podcast, a project of the Bible Literacy Foundation to help you learn the Bible. Please enjoy this final episode of The Bible Walkthrough. Among all the other books, the book was opened. The book with ramifications for every person throughout the history of the earth. The book of life filled with names. The seas had been emptied of their dead. The long forgotten graves were open. The grand tombs of the rich and famous were left vacant. All had come to this event before the great white throne of the Lord. This was the judgment, and it all depended upon the books. In the many volumes set before the Lord were words about deeds. Deeds done by each person who stood before him. Some deeds were of common decency. Some of wretched depravity. Some of mundane nature and others of more pivotal consequence. Some of ambition and others of desperation. All deeds were kept in the books, and all were examined by the judge upon his throne. As each person bowed in utter humiliation before the throne of majesty, their deeds were exposed. Many believed that they had hidden their evil acts. Many believed that they had actually done good that outweighed the bad. But few understood until this moment the gravity of their many sins. That's because, at this judgment before the great white throne, there was one special book of great consequence. It was the book of life, and in it were not deeds, but names. Names written for one reason, the blood of the Lamb. The names written in the book of life were those who trusted in the Lamb for their righteousness. No matter what the other books of deeds said, trust in Jesus ensured the names in this book. Those names written in the book of life were of people who understood that Jesus became sin for them, that in him they had become the righteousness of God. They knew that perfection had been attained because they had accepted Jesus' offer for righteousness in exchange for their sin. Perfection given, not earned. These were the names in the book of life. These were the already resurrected ones who had been reigning over the earth with Messiah for a thousand years. Yet as each of these recently undead came before this great white throne, they all sensed that the verdict was already known. The presence of this one before them was enough to answer all questions of righteousness, and any who claimed a balance between good over bad found themselves in silence before utter holiness and perfection. Each one's deeds were exposed. Each one did not find their name in the book of life. And because of this, each one was thrown into the lake of fire. This was the second death, the final death, the permanent separation between God and the wicked, where suffering is the rule forever. Their verdict on Jesus in life was ratified by God's verdict on them in death. The story of the unbeliever 
continues only in the lake of fire. But for believers, well, our story has a different conclusion. Not because of us, but because of Jesus' atoning blood applied to us through faith. Because our names are written in the book of life, we get a glorious future beyond anything we could imagine. And the prophet John describes it next. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And I saw no temple in the new Jerusalem, for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty in the land. And the city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light the nations walk, and the kings of the earth bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more, and they will need no light of lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. New heavens, new earth, no more crying, no more tears, no more death, no more pain. God has made his dwelling place with mankind forever, enthroned on the new earth among his people. Sin is gone, death is no more, and humanity has been reconstituted by the last Adam. The Adam who obeyed where the other failed, who conquered the world, who redeemed a people, and who reigns as king. Blessing has returned to planet earth, unmitigated blessing of the presence of God among his people access to the tree of life, healing from its leaves, and earth to be ruled from a new garden city, creation to enjoy with light and life everlasting. John saw all this, but he also heard the voice of the one on the throne, taking John back in time to his exile on the island of Patmos. It was a voice that gave purpose to the vision and purpose to all John's suffering for Jesus. A voice that gives purpose to all who suffer and all who hope since. He who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. He said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus tells John, 
that time is short. He is coming back soon, and when he comes back, he will bring justice and righteousness to the world. But before he does, Jesus makes an offer to all, an offer of life, the water of life to all who are thirsty. He offers all the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the promise of eternal blessing, and reign with him over the new earth. Jesus offers this to all, and he offers it to you. Don't wait to drink. Drink from the water of life, because Jesus is coming back soon. Thank you for joining us on this walkthrough of the Bible story. This has been a passion project for the Bible Literacy Foundation, as we've spent many, many hours attempting to create a dramatic and accurate telling of the Bible story. This has been the fruit of many discussions, edits, late nights, recording sessions, early mornings, prayers for guidance, and the joy of the journey. But our hope for you has been clear through it all. We've wanted you to grasp the story and the message of the Bible so that your life would be changed by it. We've wanted you to discover that this isn't a story from the ancient past or of an uncertain future. No, the Bible is a story utterly grounded in the flesh and blood of the earth. It's a story that we're a part of, whether we know it or not. We fit a place in the timeline and we have a side in the war waging on the planet. We are either on the side of rebellion or the side of restoration, on the side of falsehood or the side of truth, on the side of Satan or on the side of Jesus. The Bible is the true story of the cosmos that we are privileged to take part in, a story with a rebellious people, a crafty villain, and a pierced and resurrected hero a story that forms the gravity of the universe. All is pulled into it. Everyone has a part to play. It's the ground on which we walk. But the end of the story is perhaps the most important part, because it's the end that's really only a new beginning. It's the beginning of a new story that hasn't been written yet. An eternity future of blessing and joy unimaginable a future with intimate fellowship with our believing loved ones, and a face-to-face -face relationship with the God of all. Our hope has really been this, that by the end of this walkthrough, you would join the prophet John, that you'd join the great chorus of heaven and invite others to come alongside you as you follow the master and await his return. We want you to say, Come, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. The Spirit and the Bride say come, and let the one who hears say come. The King says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. If you enjoyed this Bible walkthrough, will you consider sharing it with a friend? We hope you're convinced that learning the Bible story is a gateway to a whole new understanding of the Bible, and we want you to share that discovery with people you know and love. If you or someone you know has been impacted by the show, will you share that testimony with us? We'd love to hear about any ways this show has affected you, and we'd love your feedback and encouragement. Anything you'd like to say, we're all ears. Email us at BibleBrief at BibleLit.org. Finally, if you've received something of value from the Bible Brief, will you consider giving to support the mission? We depend upon people like you to give so that we can continue to create Bible learning content for the world. Last of all, we want to thank our generous donors who have given their hard-earned money to support the Bible Literacy Foundation. We wouldn't be here without you, and we wholeheartedly appreciate your partnership in the mission to teach the world the life-changing story and message of the Bible. Thank you, and God bless you.
Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2023.